video, we're going to talk about molecular polarity and shapes. So the polarity and shapes of molecules um, are really important to what their function uh, is. So um, there's a bunch of different examples on the screen, but uh, basically the shape and polarity of soap molecules are what causes soap to be able to uh, break up down that oil and that grease and dirt off dishes and hands. Um, the polarity and shape of a water molecule uh, contributes to the unique properties of water and can explain why water is so important to us as humans and in our environment. Polarity and shapes of different molecules also influence how they taste and smell to us and are why we can recreate certain tastes and smells um, in different food products or um, cosmetics like perfumes. And lastly, the polarity and shape of different greenhouse gases that contribute to the greenhouse effect on Earth. Um, they're shaped in a certain way that um, they're actually able to absorb the radiation that's being emitted back from Earth, um, which allows this heat to be trapped around our Earth in the atmosphere. Okay, so let's quickly go over the two different types of electron pairs. Okay, remember a pair means two. So we have our bonding pairs, which are these shared electrons. Shared electrons mean they are shared between two different atoms, creating this covalent bond. So in this example, we have uh, ammonia, which is NH3, uh, which is three um, hydrogens that are each covalently attached or convo covalently bonded to a nitrogen atom. So between each of these atoms, the hydrogen and the nitrogen, there is this bonding pair um, that creates this covalent bond that holds these two electrons together. So a electron from hydrogen and electron from nitrogen are being shared um, to create this covalent bond. Now, this shared electron pair, we also represent with a line, okay? A connecting line that's going to connect those two different atoms together. So remember, one of these single bond lines represents two electrons, one being shared from each of the atoms that make up this bond. Then we also have what we call lone pairs, which are unshared electrons shown in pink. So in our ammonia example, there is one lone pair on the nitrogen atom. So this is two electrons. And this lone pair um, is not involved with bonding at all. It's just the extra valence electrons uh, that are on that nitrogen atom. Okay, so we already talked about bond polarity and how um, a polar bond involves two different atoms that have two different electronegativities and because they have two different electronegativities one atom is going to attract those electrons more so it's going to pull on those electrons so that they are kind of distributed closer to it so if we look at this hcl example uh, chlorine has a higher electronegativity meaning that it attracts these electrons in this covalent bond more so the electrons will be more heavily distributed near the chlorine atom. Um, we can also have a nonpolar covalent bond, which typically forms between um, atoms that make up a diatomic molecule, so a molecule that's made of two of the same atom. And that's because the two atoms involved in this bond are the same, therefore they have the same electronegativities, so they're going to share these electrons between them uh, equally. Now, we can have our polar or nonpolar bonds, but we can also look at the polarity of a molecule as a whole. So this is going to depend on the bond polarity itself and also the shape of the molecule, whether it is symmetrical or asymmetrical. VSEPR is, well, it stands for the valence shell electron pair repulsion. Um, so this is a model that we use um, to kind of visualize the shape of different molecules using their electrons that they share and the electrons that they have as lone pairs, so the ones that are not shared. 
Um, so valence electrons are arranged as far away from one another as possible. And this is um, in order to minimize the repulsion between them. So remember your like charges repel. So there's all of these electrons that are surrounding each of these atoms that make up a molecule. So they want to try to orient in a certain way um, to be uh, far away from each other as possible or to minimize this repulsion. Okay, so um, because they want to minimize this repulsion, they are going to end up being in these certain shapes. So a polar molecule is polar if it contains polar bonds, which means that there's an unequal distribution of charge. So there, the electrons are uh, more towards one atom than the other. Um, and is, if it is asymmetrical or not symmetric. So if you look at this image here of this tree, um, we can see it's not symmetrical or it's asymmetric. Because if we were to try to slice it in half, both sides would not be equal. Um, so if there are lone pairs on the central atom, then the molecule is automatically polar. Okay, so here are a few shapes. So polar molecules tend to be one of these three shapes. And they are linear, bent, and pyramidal. So a linear molecule is going to be what it sounds like. It's going to be in a line straight across with this 180 degree bond angle. Um, so in order for a linear molecule to be polar, it must be asymmetrical. So let's look at this example of carbon monoxide. So we have a carbon and oxygen triple bonded together. If you were to try to slice this molecule in half, you would see that it can't be symmetric because there's two different atoms on each side. So this is what we would call a polar molecule. Um, two other examples is HCN and also N2O. Now, bent molecules will have two pairs of lone electrons on the central atom. So the most famous example of a bent molecule is our water. So the bent shape of water is what causes it to have all of these unique properties um, that we experience in everyday life. So that central oxygen atom has two lone pairs of electrons, which causes um, this molecule to look almost bent, okay? So your water isn't going to be in a linear form because of these lone pairs of electrons. And these lone pairs of electrons contribute to that repulsion. So going in this bent shape allows that molecule to minimize that repulsion. Um, other examples of some bent molecules are NO2 and SO3. Um, sorry, SO2. But I would 100% just, you can even star this, super important that you remember that water is a bent molecule um, and that it's also polar. Um, the third one is pyramidal. So it kind of is what it sounds like. Sometimes we say trigonal pyramidal. So it kind of looks like a triangular pyramid. So these molecules are going to have one pair of lone electrons on that central atom. Um, so only one uh, pair of those. And your common examples are NH3, SO3, and PCL3. Um, again, your ammonia NH3 is super, super important and a common example that you might see very often. Um, so I would just put a star on that. Okay, so all of these are examples of different polar molecules and their shapes. Okay, so what about nonpolar molecules? So a molecule is nonpolar if it contains only nonpolar bonds or an equal distribution of charge. So what would fit in this category would be any of your diatomic molecules. So all the diatomic molecules are composed of two of the same atom bonded to each other. So these are just nonpolar bonds only, so they would automatically be considered nonpolar molecules. Um, nonpolar molecules uh, can also be symmetrical. 
Uh, so let's look at a few examples of these. So down here on the right shows you the Lewis dot structures for N2 and O2, which are two different diatomic molecules. We can see that the bonds are both nonpolar because they are consist they consist of two of the same atom. And if we were to slice these down the middle, we would see that they are symmetric. So they are the same on each side. Okay, almost like a mirror image of each other. Um, here we have an example of carbon dioxide. So carbon forms a bond with two different oxygens. And by looking at just the bond itself, we notice that um, carbon and oxygen is a polar bond because they're two different atoms. So they're going to have two different electronegativities. So one side is going to favor the electrons over the other. However, if we were to cut this molecule in half, if we were to place like a mirror in the middle of it, slice right through it, it would be the same on both sides. So it would be symmetric. Therefore, CO2 is a perfect example of how a nonpolar molecule, because it is symmetric, can have polar bonds. Another typical example you may see is CH4. So this is methane. Um, and same thing like the CO2 example, your carbon and hydrogen bonds, if we were to, to just look at one singular bond, this is polar because they're two different atoms with two different electronegativities. However, the CH4 is symmetric um, and that would make this one polar as well. Okay, and a little bit more in detail about the shapes of nonpolar molecules. So nonpolar molecules are either going to be linear, meaning they must be symmetrical. So again, this is any of your diatomic molecules um, or also CO2. CO2 is going to be a linear and symmetric molecule, making it nonpolar. Um, or it can also be tetrahedral. So the example that was looked at on the last side was methane. So it has carbon in the center with four hydrogens attached to it. Um, if you were to split this up, uh, slice through it, you would see that this molecule would still be symmetric, okay, despite it having these individual polar bond. So it would make the overall molecule nonpolar. Um, and this image on the right is kind of a three-dimensional image of what your um, CH4 looks like, this tetrahedral shape. Okay, I'm not going to go through um, every single part of this, but this is kind of a summary or an overview of all the shapes and different polarities that they might be.